You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And here we are. This is Mike Lodge of the Michael Lodge Show. I'm glad that you have joined me. It's another beautiful day. You know, I'm getting a little bit concerned only because in Florida we have had very, very little rain. And when I don't see rain and I see brown patches beginning to form on lawns and and sides of, uh, you know, places where there's lots of uh, green space and I see brown spots beginning to form, it shows to me that we haven't had enough rain. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm having to go out and water my tomato bushes constantly only because of the wind and the heat is drying them out. So it's a little bit concerning. So we haven't had any rain for quite some time. I mean, we get little, little sprinkles, but that doesn't cut it. I think we're in a Lake Worth, we're down 10 feet from where it was. That's a, that's a considerable amount of money. That I mean, not money, but a considerable amount of water to lose in just a few months. So we need some rain here in uh, beautiful South Florida. Now, I'm going to talk about two subjects today because I, I, I feel that they need to be talked about. The first subject, listen, I was listening to Tic Tac this morning. And I was listening to this young gay man express his opinions of what he thought about June Pride, and he didn't understand really the the meaning of June of uh, uh, Gay Pride Month, which is June. And so, he and plus he was a conservative, so he had a conservative view on what it all meant to him as a conservative. So what happened is that the, the conversation, well not the conversation, but the message was cut short and then came on an older gay person, individual. And that guy just literally lit into that young guy. He did not believe in his conservatism. If you look at the, the remarks afterwards, it was mean. It was vicious. The hate was so filled in the voice of this old gay man that it literally sounded as if you know he had no tolerance no tolerance for anybody who would even suggest to go against his views on what gay gay rights and gay June June gay pride is all about and he went on about how people fought for him to be able to be gay and, and everything else I mean We've heard those kind of conversations before. Here's the issue, though. and here's, here's what I have a problem with. You see, when individuals were fighting for rights for the gay community, they always preached that the nation had to have tolerance. It'd be accepting. But what I've seen lately is that these individuals who I don't know if they really have a father really even thought about what tolerance really means. You see, tolerance goes both ways. I respect your views and you respect my views. But we don't attack each other. We don't try to destroy the, the destroy the destroy each other. We don't try to project hate upon that individual. But that seems to be what happened because the tolerance has now become uh, uh, has become politicized. Either you believe in the way that I believe, or I'm not accepting of you. I am a, and this is what they say: I am a gay person. I have the same rights as you, unless you go against me. See, this is what liberalism has taught political agendas is that everybody else is wrong no one else can have another opinion or another thought process 
or another believe. No, you have to go by what I believe. So I saw this gay man literally tearing this guy apart. And then I read all the comments uh, that followed from individuals who posted their comments. There was literally no tolerance shown to this young guy. No tolerance whatsoever. You see, in order for tolerance to work, you have to practice tolerance. You have to practice what you fought for. If you fought for tolerance, you have to show tolerance to other people and other ideas. Your view is not always the right view. My view is not always the right view. But when we come to the word tolerance and the meaning of tolerance and the practice of tolerance, it means a great deal. You see, you can't shout tolerance and not deliver tolerance. It's like you can't shout fire and then not fight the fire. So I was very disappointed when I saw that within a community, within any community, gay, straight, Christian, non-Christian, Democrat, Republican, if you go against somebody else's views and and you don't believe with them, you immediately attack. That's not tolerance. Tolerance means I believe that you have that right. Now, if we're going to talk about hate, then we show no tolerance for hate of any kind. But we do show tolerance for other people's views and opinions and beliefs. There's nothing wrong with that. Tolerance is a good thing, but it can't just be a one-way street. It has to be both ways. Now, if you don't know what the word tolerance is, sit down. You can Google it very simply. Once you have found out what tolerance is about, then you have to practice what that means. You see... It becomes a very tricky situation when you're preaching something but you're not practicing. It's like a Christian minister going out and preaching and preaching all about God's love and then having extramarital affairs on the side. And he goes down in disgrace. It's like a politician who says, you have to wear that mask, but then you see them not wearing that mask. You see, you've got to, if you're going to preach something, you have got to believe it. You have got to practice it. If we believe in freedom of speech, but then you want to take freedom of speech away from someone, then you don't really understand what freedom of speech is all about. You see, it can't just go one way. It can't go just your way of thinking, your beliefs, your political activism, your political agenda. No, or your or your whatever agenda that you may have. It, it can't just go your way. If you don't sit down and talk to these individuals and find out why they believe in a certain way, then you have not practiced tolerance. You don't even know what the word means. So that was one of the things that really bothered me this morning when I when I was listening to that. I think it was just a pure attack of hate towards another individual, a very young individual, being hated on by his peers that don't believe in his political views. So you can get up and you can say, well, I fought for this and you don't understand what we fought for. Listen, a lot of people have fought for a lot of different things in this nation. We fought for this freedom, but are you defending that freedom anymore? No. When the Constitution says you have the freedom of speech, the freedom of practicing whatever religion that you want to practice, are you supporting that? Are you showing tolerance for that? Are you endorsing that? No. 
You see, everybody has the ability to say and believe how they want to. As long as as long as it's not hate. But if you attack another individual for how he believes without sitting down and talking to that individual, then you have destroyed what you fought for. When you start attacking other people and pointing fingers at other people and you start degrading them in, in public and everything else, you have fought for nothing. Because now you're turning and doing exactly what you thought you were fighting for, the tolerance. It's a big problem that we have that in, in all of our societies that are around this world, this globe of ours, of people saying something but not practicing what they preach. Happens every single day. I'm probably guilty of it too. We as humans, we have this ability to really do stupid things and say stupid stuff. But we also have the ability to turn around and change, correct it, and fix it. So to that older man who was putting down that child, that kid, that young man, practice the tolerance that you say you fought for. That's all that I'm asking. That's all that I'm asking. Now the other thing I want to talk about, because I I think it's very important that we do this, is that, listen, I journal every single day. So I write down thoughts, I write down conversations, I write down uh, my goals that I want to set for that day. And it works. I'm telling you, it works. I've been doing it now for, oh my gosh, over four years now. I have been keeping a journal. Now, it's a nice journal. It's a leather-bound journal with markers in it, and it's got all kinds of different stuff. And I take it with me everywhere. If I'm going on a plane, I take it out of my my uh, case, and I have it with me on my desk, and I have a pen, and I'm jotting down notes and everything else that I need to accomplish or what I need to say. Or sometimes I even practice, and I write down what I need to say to the individual that I'm going to go see. I keep my notes in there from my mediations that I conduct. So I hear both sides and I'm writing down both what they're saying. So my journal is kept for a lot of different things. But the most important thing that it is, is is two things. One, one is planning. It's planning my day, what I need to get accomplished. And I mark them off as I, mark them off as I accomplish them throughout the day. It's vital for that. You know, I've tried to use computers, but computers I forget completely about. But if I know that I've got to do something in my journal, I sit there and I ponder, and then I write some more and write some more and add notes to it and add corrections to it based upon conversations that I've had on the items that I have put on my journal. It helps you organize and plan. The other issue is my thoughts. If I hear a good quote, I write it down. If I hear a good joke, I write it down. And let me tell you, I have gone had to go back to some of these some of the stuff that I've written down and use them in in talks I've given or use them in podcasts I've used. A lot of different things that I talk about on this podcast comes from my journal because I I write down so much. It's one of those things that I do. I want each and every single one of you to sit down and start journaling. You don't need a big fancy one like I have. I have two of them. One one is for um, a, a book that I'm writing. If I have thoughts for a book that I'm, I'm putting together, I write in. And then I have the one for my everyday planning. So I have two. I'm a journalistic freak, I guess. That's what you want to call me. But I do it because it's the best way to organize my thoughts. I used to put everything down on the computer, but then I would forget that it's in the computer. I couldn't find it on my computer. I didn't know where it was on my computer. I forgot the password to the stupid thing. <laughs> so I started keeping the journal, and the journal in handwritten mode reminds you of what you need to do, how you need to respond to it, how you need to check it off when you got it done. I put my budgeting in there. I put my money stuff in there. I put everything that I need to do for 
my little tiny practice that I have. And I love the conversations that I keep with friends because I write down stuff that they say. If it impacted me, I write it down. And I, you would be surprised as you're walking along sometimes. Or if you're having just a cup of coffee. And if you hear people talking, you hear one little bits of words that when you put them all together, it means something that you can share with somebody else. I do it all the time. Especially when I'm listening to individuals who are talking about the relationship of life that we have with you and me and with everybody around us. Because I tell you, that is a, a working object in, in, in space. I mean, we're working on it every single day. These relationships that we have. And I, I think it's so important to journalize what's going on in our life. I, I, one of the things that I like about it, some days I will go back and reread some of the stuff I've written. And I've had, I ask myself, what in the hell were you talking about? <laughs> but it was important at that time. And then it brings back the memory of what I was doing at that moment. And then I put a note onto it. This is what was happening at that time to justify this kind of a statement that I put in my journal. This journal entry. It's like accounting. In accounting, we have what are called journal entries. In other words, we're making an adjustment in our financial statements. And we call it the journal entry. And that's where we put our note as to why we're adjusting or making that journal entry. Same thing with a journal that we keep in our life. We are making adjustments in our life and we're marking it down and telling us why we did it. So I encourage every single one of you, if you haven't kept a journal, do it. They do work. In fact, the incident that I told you about earlier with the young gay man and the older gay man, I journalized it in my journal. Because I wanted to keep that thought process going inside my head. Because the word tolerance meant so much to me. When I'm in mediation, tolerance is very important. To be tolerant of the other person's views. The other person's view of what the incident or the conflict is about. I, journal, I journalized it because I wanted to go back and revisit that from time to time because tolerance has got to be acceptable on both sides of the fence. But we're not seeing it. But I journalized it, so I remembered exactly what I wanted to say. Journal. Become a journalist. Not that kind of a journalist. You're not writing any, any reporting or paperwork. But you are writing the thought process of your life. Listen, if you like my podcast and you like the content of my podcast, show me some love. I need some love. Go to www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. Show me some love. Helps me out with my bills. Greatly appreciated. If you have a business question or if you have a mediation issue, a conflict or a dispute that you would like to bounce off me, send me an email at info, I-N-F-O, at lodge, L-O-D-G-E, dash C-O dot com. Go to my website, learn more about me at www.lodge, L-O-D-G-E, dash C-O dot com. I'm there all the time. <laughs> I am interneted, <laughs> if that's how you call it. Listen, this is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you again. Probably tomorrow. Talk with you soon. Bye bye. This podcast is brought to you by Michael Lodge, who is the producer of this show. Follow me every day, pass me on to all of your friends. Talk with you soon.